There's an old saying, broadcast programming is simply just that, design to program the audience. And over the last eight years, that has become more and more true. Entertainment stopped being about entertaining people and instead has been about pushing the message, pushing an ideology. And if you don't adhere to that ideology, there must be something wrong with you. You must be some form of istophobe. Storytelling has always been an effective mechanism for passing down values and morals. After all, we see this quite a bit with the Grimm's fairy tales. For example, Hansel and Gretel, don't take candy from strangers because they might be a witch who want to eat you. Tender Throughout human history, we have used storytelling to go and reinforce the social norms and the values of the time period. A good example of this is the morality plays from the Middle Ages. Other examples of what I'm referring to can be found in Greek mythology as well as various stories in the Bible. Now there's nothing wrong when it comes to talking about peace, love, and tolerance. The issue is that when it's not about those things and about pushing an ideological agenda. Slaves built this country. It's the reason why activists have gone and infiltrated entertainment because they know if they can get to their kids, well, that's the easiest way to push their agenda because children are more malleable when they're young as compared to adults. Fill them pews, people. That's the key. Grab the little ones as well. Hook them while they're young. Kind of like the tobacco industry. Christ, if only we had their numbers. These tactics of going after children is nothing new. The tobacco industry has been doing it for years, up to the point where the government put a stop to it. Because they knew if they got them while they're young, they would have a new generation of customers for life. And the same thing goes when it comes to pushing an ideology. Welcoming to like, my like, not at all secret gay agenda. Now this is LaToya Ravino. She is a Disney executive who works on the Proud Family TV series, which is a show aimed at children. Sense of, I don't have to be afraid to like, let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background, this, like I was just, wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to like, the, if you see anything queer in the show. Proud family. But like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. And we're also seeing the exact same sentiment being echoed within Doctor Who coming from cis gay man Russell T. Davies because obviously that is the most important thing about him. Because all this is about indoctrinating children. Indoctrinate! Indoctrinate! But not just representation for representation's sake either, Russell Rose is a character. There's I beg to differ, I watched the episode. She is simply there just to push the narrative of transmission fluid acceptance. Because this is what cis gay man Russell T Davies, because obviously these are the most important characteristics about him, is about to say. Indoctrinate! Absolutely, and it actually it becomes a vital part of the plot that, that Rose contains the he and the she and the neither and the both. That's not how biology works. No, I am not a biologist, but I did take a biology class in high school, and I'm also not retarded. Now, personally, I think there is definitely a way you can go and tell this story. For example, let's say Donna's child starts off as male, and because of the meta crisis, something happens to him and forces him to go and regenerate and regenerates into a girl. There you go. Trans allegory. And there's lots of ways you can go and explore this concept. For example, Donna having to come to terms with the fact that her son of 15 years is now a girl. How do you go and explain this to the school? Or to his friends? Or even Rose having to have to come to terms with it herself? Personally, I find this a more fascinating way of going and exploring the concept of transgenderism without beating the audience over the head. But like I said, this is not about entertainment. It's about indoctrination. Yeah. And that's a new future. That Rose goes beyond words, beyond definitions. And it is important. I think that visibility thing I said before is like, as you were saying, if you grow up seeing these, this stuff, homophobia and transphobia happens when it's something you've never seen before. I'm sorry, buddy. That's not how transphobia and homophobia work. A lot of people have grown up not exposed to these concepts, and that doesn't make them raging istophobes. You're trying to rationalize to the audience why you're trying to indoctrinate children. You can temper that reaction and change it if you introduce these images to people happily and normally and calmly when they're young. I hate when people try and rationalize things that are not normal as being normal because they're not. But by the same token, just because something is not normal doesn't mean that it's bad or amoral which is what they always seem to conflate this with. I have 
two disabilities. I'm blind in one eye and I have a learning disability. That's not normal. Those are complications. Yes, by all means, it does make me different, but I hate this idea that somehow it makes you special, which is not the case. That it just becomes normal. It is normal. I don't need to say it's normal. No, it's not. However, it does just make you human. But that normality just becomes part of your world. You're not stressed, you don't freak, you don't react, you, don't, you haven't lost anything, you don't hate anything. It's a better world. And of course, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. The issue with normalizing something that is not normal is that once it's normalized, they move on to something else. And the question is, what's next? Is it normalizing fans of the playground? Is it normalizing cutting off children? Personally, I think the issue is when you try and force something on somebody, the more likely they're going to be resistant to it. I've gotten to the point where I can't stand Pride Month. Why? Is it because I hate gay people? Fuck no. It's because I'm tired of having it forced on me every year and it just starts earlier and earlier and they're trying to make it basically the whole bloody year. And trust me, I'm someone who gets rather irate when I see Christmas decorations in the middle of October. Can I at least get through Halloween before I start hearing Christmas music being blared in every single store? Boy, that was a random tangent. However, it's no longer about being tolerant and teaching tolerance is not a bad thing. The issue is that Tolerance and acceptance are completely different things. Tolerance does not mean you accept something. It means you tolerate it. And on top of that, it's no longer just about acceptance. You have to celebrate it. And if you don't, well, then you must be an istophobe. And for the woke karate retards who show up in my comment section and feel the need to go and explain that TV shows like Doctor Who and Star Trek have always been woke, you should just stop watching and go to Fox News. First off, go fuck yourself. TV shows like Doctor Who and Star Trek are not woke. They never have been. You could definitely say that they're liberal to progressive. And yes, they certainly do try and explore current issues of the day, but they do in such a manner where they present both sides. And what this does, it allows the audience to go and come to their own conclusion. Where liberalism and progressivism preach tolerance, wokeness is the opposite. It is dogmatic adherence to the ideology. Under liberalism and progressivism, we can agree to disagree, but wokeness is authoritarianism. If you disagree, you are wrong and therefore must be re-educated because there is only one answer and that is the ideology. And if you resist, well, you need to be canceled. And these things would not be done in Doctor Who or Star Trek. And when it is portrayed, it's typically the villains that are the ones that are doing it. Anyway, folks, that's my take. What is yours? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are. If you showed up out of nowhere and you enjoyed my video, make sure to go and subscribe and hit that thumbs up on the way out. If you want to hear more of my opinions on Doctor Who, I have another video popping up right about there. I'll catch you next time, folks.